produce sand for the industrial minerals business, primarily for the frac industry, and about 20% for non-frac, which would be, would be glass, ceramics, foundry type sand. Um, the operation's been here for about 115 years, producing mostly non-frac sand. Uh, my responsibilities are here from geology, engineering, the mining, production, laboratory, um, the bagging, and the logistics of getting the product off the um, site, either by truck or by rail. Uh, in the lab, all of our products have to be sampled. We have a certificate of analysis, analysis on all of our finished products that have to meet a certain grade. Um, in the lab, we sample our product as it goes through the system, so if it's not meeting specifications, we can modify the system, because once it goes in the rail car out of spec, you have to dump the load. So we're doing preventive work on that side of it. Well, a lot of our projects around are short and long-term cost savings ideas. We call them continuous improvement projects. How do we can produce the sand at a lower cost? Because um, most of our costs are fixed, so if you can get more tons through the system, at a fixed cost, your cost unit cost will actually go down. Um, so we work on that, to be honest with you, daily. My family's full of electrical engineers. I grew up in Los Alamos, Albuquerque, Livermore, Las Vegas. Anywhere you design or set off a thermonuclear warhead. So um, for me, it's been very beneficial, especially from education. Um, but I got into it, my dad was a rock hound. He did lapidary work and he owned a small hobby mine in New Mexico, underground gold mine. I grew up hiking, you know, in the Sierras, John Muir Trail, a lot of backpacking. So as a geologist, you're hiking. You're going up and down mountains. You get paid to go hike around all day, which is kind of a neat thing to do. Between junior and senior year, when you do the geologic field camp, which is six weeks out in Nevada in the Grand Canyon, and that's when you're actually out doing it. You know, it's a little bit different in field trips. One day you're out there for six weeks mapping and studying the geology. That's when I found it very exciting. Uh, my parents are great. They've the kids whatever they want to do. They're very supportive of whatever we want to do, and they pushed on the math and science. My dad was very strong on that, especially middle school through high school. My future mother-in-law set me up with a company that was in her office building. She was managing. It was an exploration company, um, but it was just a networking. Um, going around and um, visiting a lot of people and showing some interest. Um, and that's the key to all this, is just developing a good network, join the associations, Geologic Society of America or the state you're in or the societies for mining nationally, and just start networking. Um, that's where you're going to get to where you want to go. Nicaragua, the Yukon, about 18 states in the U.S., from the northwest, southwest, to the southeast. Um, and then South America and Chile as far as consulting with the companies I work for. Um, big international companies are interesting because you, they can pull you around to many sites in the U.S. to bring your best practices to some other location. But if you want to get in and, and see multiple cultures and multiple deposits, that's the way to go. The only thing I can tell the students is just be curious. And the problem I'm having now is finding people who aren't curious anymore. You know, why did this go this way or how can I make it better? And just have an inane sense of trying to make it better or, or make it even work better for you or make more dollars for you. But just be curious and that's what a geologist does. He's always curious, how did that rock get formed? And if I go over here, am I going to find the same rock or am I going to find the gold, the mother load? Geology is a great profession because you have to know chemistry, you got to know math, engineering, biology. You get a little bit of everything and you got to stay up on it because it's changing every day. What's really missing in the programs right now is any financial training. You need to take as many financial classes as you can, even get past accounting 101, 102. So the more financial understanding you have, and it's, just, it's a better tool to go with, and that's with every business. HR, you know, if you get in some sociology, or I'm not sure what they have in school for HR, but I know there's disciplines in that, because um, the majority of what you're going to deal with here is you're dealing with people. It's not just rocks, not metal, it's people, and the people actually get the work done for you. Um, as we talked about in internships, they're very valuable, I think, here. If, we, if you work for a company that actually worked on projects, um, our internships that we do, we actually put them out in the field in their discipline. Um, 
like I said, you learn the culture, you learn the language, um, you learn a lot about the deposits themselves. So you can pick it up pretty quick, especially as a student. You see a lot of the young engineers, young geologists, the associations, the things they're coming up with, they're kind of um, they're fighting the old guard. They're trying to find a better way to do something rather than we've always done it this way. Um, that's re really refreshing. And if you allow the young people to run and figure out a different way to do it or let them trip or let them fall, they'll come up with a different solution. That's exciting. We need to reach out to them. Like I said, the Society of Mining, Millage, and Exploration have a program to educate teachers during the summer to go back to their classrooms and educate them what actually going on in mines or at mineral processing sites. But it's got to start in school. You know, if the parents aren't getting them into it, the school's got to get them into it, or society does. And mining's getting very involved in that. A lot of donation. In Oregon, where I came from, we were donating time at the Boys and Girls Club. So we're helping them with school, but in the meantime, we can describe what we're doing as a business.